The Beach Boys, The Beatles and Donovan chased round the world after the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in search of spiritual peace. But Charlie Watts has built-in meditation power and finds all the peace he needs on an isolated Sussex farm. Many pop stars have been through traumatic scenes in the last few years, bending like reeds before the blasts of philosophy and fashion. Charlie has stayed the same. He likes to give the impression of being bored and boring. But this is a good line of defense for somebody who is as enthusiastic as ever about the Rolling Stones, enjoys working and has lots of interest in art writing films and music. If he is reluctant to expound too wordily on his interests, it is because pretension is anathema to him. I asked Charlie about the film One Plus One, by French director Jean-Luc Godard. Charlie said, have you ever seen any of his films? I admitted I hadn't seen any of his films and asked him if they were very experimental. Charlie explained, no, I don't like that word experimental. His films aren't like basic stories. They are much more intimate. He can shoot a film entirely in one room and he's just filming us at work, creating, as he calls it. When he's at work, you just don't know you are being filmed. I've heard people say it's like a documentary but he's creating an environment for a film about creation and destruction. I asked Charlie if he was involved in the recent fire at the studios. Charlie said, that was bloody frightening. The lights got too hot, and when the fire started I didn't think they could put it out. Most of our gear was saved, so we can still work. It was funny, we sat looking at the fire and we didn't think it was happening until they started getting extinguishers out. How busy and involved are Charlie and the Stones? We haven't stopped working since January, Charlie said, and there hasn't been a week when there hasn't been something to do. I'm very pleased with the single and the next LP has got fantastic things on it. It will be very right for the times. It'll be much more together than the last one. Satanic Majesties was a good step in the right direction, but this will be better. When we did Majesties we didn't have a producer and nobody to hold us together, which you need when you've got five people putting different suggestions out. I like working with our producer Jimmy Miller. He kept us going through the sessions. Mick and Keith kept on writing of course, and Jimmy kept us playing. Jimmy's got a great ear for picking things out and he'll tell us in a nice way what is right and wrong. Mick asked him to join and I hope he stays personally. I asked Charlie about the present mood of the Stones in view of recent events. Charlie responded, we went through a period of depression last year. People change every day don't they? One day we can do a track that sounds awful, work all night and it sounds awful. Then next day, it sounds totally different. Mick gets depressed, then he feels alright again. There's no point in our saying, shall we carry on? We have to carry on because there is nothing else we can do and it's our way of getting enjoyment. What is giving Charlie musical enjoyment at the moment? My fave rave at the moment, Charlie said, is The Sorcerer by Miles Davis. And I like listening to the quiet stuff Buddy Rich plays, like his album with Art Tatum. I like Don Ellis, but he can go off after a bit. But it's great if you know what I mean. There seems to be more West Coast avant-garde pop, like the Mothers of Invention. Maybe that is where jazz is going. Does Charlie have any ambitions to do things outside of the Stones? I do, but it's no good talking about it until I've done it, Charlie concluded. And somehow one is left with the feeling that one day Charlie Watts will shake the world.